Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. In the previous video, we looked at the sensory components of cranial nerve 5, which is the trigeminal nerve. Recall the trigeminal nerve had both sensory and motor components. Now, remember that the trigeminal nerve is broken up into three separate parts. We have V1, and remember the V comes from the fact that this is cranial nerve 5 with a Roman numeral 5, which is a V. We have V1, which is the ophthalmic nerve, V2, which is the maxillary nerve, and then V3, which is the mandibular nerve. Now, remember from the previous video, V1 and V2 are both sensory only. They have no motor function. But V3, the mandibular nerve, has both sensory and motor function. If you'd like more detail on that, go back to the previous video where we talk about the sensory components. I go into that in a tad more detail. When we looked at this figure in the previous video uh, for V3, I mentioned that we had this nerve to mylohyoid or mylohyoid nerve. All the others here for V3 are sensory only, but this mylohyoid nerve is a motor nerve because it goes to innervate the mylohyoid muscle and the anterior belly of the digastric muscle. We're done talking about those because what we really want to focus on here are the muscles of mastication. Mastication is a fancy term for chewing or basically movement of the mandible relative to the maxilla. And there's four major mastication muscles. Two of them are shown here. This one is the temporalis muscle and this one over here is the masseter muscle. The other two are deep to the masseter and those are the lateral and medial pterygoid muscles. We'll look at those in a couple of slides. What we want to understand here is the motor pathway for the trigeminal nerve. And as opposed to the sensory pathways, which go from the face and head up to the somatosensory cortex, of course, the motor pathway is going to go the opposite direction. It's going to begin at the motor cortex here. Here's the cell body. And it's going to go down from the brain through the brainstem out to these muscles in the periphery. So it goes in the opposite direction. The other major difference is that for the sensory components, it's a three neuron system. We have a first order neuron, a second order neuron, and a third order neuron. For the motor component here of the trigeminal nerve, it's a two neuron system, and we turn them an upper motor neuron and a lower motor neuron. And when we refer to the lower motor neuron, that's really where we're calling that the cranial nerve. Okay? So up here we have the motor cortex. Of course, we have to have a motor program to execute for movements of any of these mastication muscles. You go to chew your food, that motor program begins in the motor cortex. So this is the cell body of that upper motor neuron. We follow it down from the motor cortex, and it's going to go into the brain stem, down through the midbrain, and then it's going to enter the pons, which is where decussation occurs. So the motor cortex here exerts contralateral control, and the pons is where that decussation occurs. You see here that the upper motor neuron then will synapse with a lower motor neuron, right? And that occurs in this nucleus on the contralateral side called the masticator nucleus, or sometimes called the trigeminal motor nucleus. Now, both the motor and sensory components decussate. However, another big difference is that when you look at the sensory part here in gold, remember that as it enters the pons, it then does this loop where it loops all the way down to the medulla, decussates, and then comes all the way back up. We don't have that loop with the motor part. It just simply goes down to the pons, crosses over, and that's where the synapse occurs with that lower motor neuron in the masticator nucleus. From there, uh, the lower motor neuron pretty much just follows a path into the trigeminal ganglion and pretty much runs with the sensory part of V3, the mandibular nerve. Okay? And pretty much it just goes down here to the mandibular area and gives off branches as need be to these four muscles of mastication. Let's look at the same thing here in a different picture. So in blue here, these are actually the corticospinal tracts. Uh, these actually go down all the way through the brainstem into the spinal cord for innervation of muscles like in arms, legs, and torso. But we're talking about the head and the face here. So we're looking at these red neurons. Right here, this is the cell body of an upper motor neuron potentially that's going to a muscle of mastication. These are sometimes called the corticobulbar tracts, but in any case, here's an upper motor neuron coming from the motor cortex. It's going to actually travel closely with the corticospinal tracts here, and it's going to descend down from the brain, and it's going to descend through the midbrain, 
and ultimately it's going to come out here to the pons. You'll notice here, this is the motor nucleus of cranial nerve 5. You see that V motor, motor nucleus of cranial nerve 5. As this tract comes down here and enters the pons, where it crosses over, and then we see that synapse with the lower motor neurons here whose cell bodies are contained in that motor nucleus of cranial nerve 5. This is actually the mastication nucleus right here. Now it doesn't show anything else, but in that mastication nucleus, those lower motor neurons then extend their axons down to join the rest of the trigeminal nerve, going through the trigeminal ganglion, and then ultimately out to the various mastication muscles. So here we're really just seeing that upper motor neuron, where it kind of gets off at the pons, where it crosses over and then synapses with the neurons whose cell bodies are in that mastication nucleus right there. Now what are the mastication muscles? Well again, we've seen these two. This is the temporalis muscle, and this is the masseter right here. The masseter is actually a two-headed muscle, so this right here is just the deeper head of it. And this is the superficial head. And then if you remove the masseter and look in the infratemporal fossa, you actually see the other two muscles. This one up here would be the lateral pterygoid, two-headed muscle, and this one down here, another two-headed muscle would be the medial pterygoids. Okay. So those are your four mastication muscles. Remember that in general, the facial muscles are innervated by the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7. However, the mastication muscles specifically that are used to move the mandible and for chewing, those are innervated by the trigeminal nerve, specifically that mandibular nerve V3, the motor part of it. All right. So hopefully now you have a good understanding of both the sensory and motor components of the trigeminal nerve. In the next video in this playlist, we're going to go to cranial nerve 7, which is the facial nerve. After that, we'll look at the vestibular cochlear nerve, cranial nerve 8. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.